I didn't want to come back. Why would I, after all that's happened, even in here? So, where is the journal? Don't need to go in there. That's the bathroom. Is that me? Oh my god, the hair. What was I thinking? Look, Mr. Torres, I'm happy he finally got remarried. A honeymoon in the Bahamas. Wish I was there with them. California crisp white wines. Mm. I'll need a crate of those when I get out of here. What, more than a hundred again today? Glad I don't have to deal with that anymore. No, that's her parents' room. I don't want to go back down. She wouldn't talk to me on the phone, so what else could I do? I drove all the way up there to Vancouver, freezing my ass off in that tin can of a car. Of course I knew it was her. Who else? There was only one thing to do. Get to Marie. Hi, Kelsey. Yes, I'm talking to you. I know you've been reading my journal. Can I ever forgive you for what you did? Honestly, I don't know. I'm trying really hard, but I don't know how. Because I don't understand any of it. You are my friend, and I loved you unconditionally. I did what I did because of you, and I stood up to him because of you. But you? I don't know. Right now, I can't be near you, so I don't want you to come find me. I promise I'll be alright. Marie. Except she wouldn't be. She would not be alright. I'm not a shadow person. Yeah, it took me all I had to convince her she wasn't. Every Tuesday, the food trucks would roll in. Me and Marie never missed Jorge's tamales. When I was a kid, Jorge would put some aside, just in case my mom was too drunk to feed me again. The green eatery. Green as in with fungus. Yes, I am never eating Ayurvedic lasagna ever again. But some people must have liked Mr. Jones's cooking because he was out every night cooking his green stuff. Food rescue. Yeah, it was a good place to be until Marie showed up. I know she didn't mean anything by it, but the pity in her eyes. Worse than being hungry. I couldn't afford a car, and Marie didn't want one, so we rode our bikes everywhere. I thought I looked silly, 
And with those damn sparkly shoes, I probably did. Yeah, I was losing my glamour status at school right there. Mr. Torres gave me my own set of keys, so I'd feel at home. I loved him for it, but every time I used those keys, I felt a pang of guilt. She asked me why I was so angry all the time, and I told her because it's a dirty deal. It's Russian roulette and utterly unfair. The cards had been dealt. Any player would have passed. I chose to be angry instead. But Marie, my friend Marie, she got me a new deck and suggested I deal again. He had money, you see? He bought me things. I was gonna wear these to the prom. Fancy, right? At the time, I didn't know where the money came from. There's no such thing as food waste. And don't I know it. The smell of garbage will be in my nose forever and the taste of it in my mouth. I swore I would never be that hungry again. I didn't care what it took. Marie insisted on saving these. She was going to make a new world with them, whatever that was supposed to be. I've never actually seen her build anything. Mr. Torres and Marie were robbed in their own house, not long after we met at food rescue. He was stabbed, almost died. She was knocked out with a baseball bat. She was in the hospital for a while, stitches, concussion. She still had headaches, she said. She hated my cigarettes. Every time I felt like going out and buying a pack, she made me put the money in that money jar. One day, that money would pay for our gas to drive to college. We only needed money for the one way. I ended up using it to get to Vancouver. I didn't like that she kept the stone. Why did she have to be reminded? I told her I was sorry, but she said it was for me to remind me. I need to find the key, a five figure number. That's Trevor's phone number. He called her. I knew he blamed her for everything, though she should have blamed him for what he did to her and Mr. Torres. She loved being a birthday girl. Mr. Torres would take her shopping every year. I loved skinny dipping, but Marie insisted on wearing this thing. Really, I mean, it was Mr. Jones's pool after dark. No one would ever come close to the freak. And he wasn't there, just to be clear. But someone else was. She once asked me, don't you ever dream, Kelsey? And I said, I don't. I don't dream. I plan. What I didn't tell her was that I wouldn't allow anyone to mess with those plans. Have you ever peeled an orange so juicy the drops erupted from underneath the skin like fireworks in the setting sun? The trees in Mr. Jones's garden had them. I used to live off his garden vegetables and fruit before I met Trevor. Disgusting, but cheap. I got used to them after I didn't want to go to the food kitchen anymore. The vicious taste of these meatballs 
still beat the humiliation of being served by Marie. I wore those a lot, not to protect my eyes, but to hide them. I didn't want anyone to know. Sometimes it got so hot, this thing wasn't doing it anymore. Then we'd take off to Mr. Jones's swimming pool. That night, I guess he must have seen us. Marie always dreamed about going to Europe. I don't think she ever went. <laughs> Lorraine, Marie's mom, died when she was five. My mother, she might as well have been dead. She looked more dead than alive, anyhow. Passed out on the couch, empty bottles of gin on the floor. La La Land. That movie was a shit piece of crap. Glad Trevor snuck us in. I don't think I could have handled wasting 20 bucks on that. Never thought I'd see Marie there. Then again, she always was a dreamer. I bet she loved it. She never realized I didn't want to be her friend in public. Trevor, what an asshole. After we broke up, he got violent sometimes. One day he dragged me through the school hall by my shirt until one of Marie's geek friends stopped him. Ben, I think it was. You got a lot of shit for it later. Mr. Torres. Thick as thieves, those two. Ever since Lorraine died, they only had each other. Marie was suffering when he was in intensive care. That was a nasty knife wound. She wouldn't stop about time travel and black holes and stuff. I just wanted to do something simple. Calculate shit. Boring is what she said. Her, the weird kid ducked boring. So yeah, we settled on antimatter because who wants to be boring? Trevor was never far off, though. When Marie and I rode our bikes through dark nights just to get a taste of those perfect oranges, I knew he was lurking in the shadows. I never told her, but I think that's how he found us. He followed us back to the room. Ah, uh, yes. The science project. Of all people, they chose to pair me with the girl from Food Rescue. Outrageous. But I got over it and chose to work my ass off. I had to if I wanted to get that scholarship. Chemistry holds no surprises. Love that. That's Marie's birthday. That's weird. I guess she wrote it down for that Ben guy for her pizza and movie party. All right, I might have been a little jealous. I thought I was so lucky. An adoring boyfriend, free burgers from the kitchen he worked in, sparkly things he bought me. I thought if I took care of him, he'd take care of me. 
and we'd get out just in case I didn't get that scholarship. I had no idea where the money came from. Have you seen this man? <laughs> yeah, I've seen him. Hated that thing. I'm not a shadow person. Yeah. One day, I just had to know, what's up with all the cats? She said she admired them, that they were who they were without any pretense, that they had no fear of confrontation. She wanted to be more like them. When Bumblebee went missing, Marie cried for days. She thought I couldn't hear her at night. I could never prove it, but I'm sure it was Trevor. Marie, what were you thinking? You know that's illegal. Why does someone need to get hurt before we step up and act, for Christ's sake? If they had, None of this shit would have happened, and no one would have died. Oh no. Why didn't you tell me, Marie? No wonder you were so frightened. We never should have gone to the Orange Grove.
Mr. Torres loved that beer. After the robbery, he only had a couple left. Apparently, they were hard to come by. Still, we decided to try a bottle once. Marie loved that label. She drew it in her journal. I remember that. All that happened later that night? I'm not sure. Maybe I don't want to remember. She was my friend, and I had to tell her. So I came back here, throwing stones at the window, but she didn't react, so I threw a bigger stone, and it shattered the glass. She kept the stone as a souvenir to remind her not to trust me ever again. to find the key, a five-figure number. Yay! Good work, Kelsey. Oh my god. The past, like the future, is indefinite and exists only as a spectrum of possibilities Stephen Hawkins said that. I wish it were true. But there was nothing I could do about the past. It was definite as hell. Sometimes I didn't get Marie. I really thought a night by Jones's pool would help her relax. She used to love it there. But she insisted someone had been watching us. I just wanted to have a good time. And she was ruining it. So I said some things I shouldn't have. 
She just stood there staring at the window. I was so annoyed. And that's when I knew she'd been right. Trevor. Right there in the room. He'd just come in through the open window. How did he find us? He didn't know where Marie and I lived. I always made sure of that. But he took an orange from his backpack and started peeling it. It had been Trevor by the pool. And he'd followed us home. He said to Marie, I told you not to mess with me. But still, I didn't get it. No, it wasn't until he started moving in on her that I realized it was Marie. He was after Marie. He blamed her for everything, and he had a knife. I'd never seen him so angry, so evil. Marie tried to get it away from him. He asked her why she never answered her phone. Did she not read her emails? Or did she think they were hollow threats? God, I just wanted to punch him with anything I could lay my hands on. My backpack. I smashed it against his wrist, knocking the knife out of his hands. Marie went for it, but Trevor was faster. He kicked her in the head. I dove for the knife, but he jumped me. As we struggled, he hissed. Didn't I get enough action yet? Maybe I needed another baseball bat to get my kicks. I stopped because right then I knew what he was up to. He asked Marie about Mr. Torres. Was he all right? Did he still get stomach aches? Marie lay on the floor by the bed, in shock, realizing it had been Trevor who almost killed her father. Then Trevor looked at me, added with a smile. And her. That's when it all went to pieces. Trevor ripped us apart, and he was enjoying it. Marie didn't understand. I tried to explain, apologized, but she wasn't listening. She kept asking me if I'd been there with Trevor in their house. Trevor stirred things up even more. He told her it was me who had hit her over the head with a baseball bat, that I'd enjoyed it. I screamed in frustration. No, that's not what happened. Tears streamed down Marie's face. She couldn't believe I would do that. Hurt her deliberately. God, I wanted Trevor to stop talking. I attacked him, scratched his face, hit him wherever I could. I hated him. He was twisting everything. I wanted to tell her that I was sorry. Yes, we robbed the house. And we got caught by Mr. Torres. But I never meant for anyone to get hurt. I didn't smash Marie's head. I panicked. I wanted to stop her from seeing me. When I realized how badly injured she was, I called the police. I tried to stay, but Trevor wouldn't let me. He pulled me by my hair into the van. But Marie wasn't listening. I was losing it, and I like to think I beat Trevor up pretty good. But Trevor punched back harder and faster. He was about to crack my skull. Marie clawed for the box beside her, opened it, she screamed, told us to stop, pointed that nine millimeter at us. Trevor went nuts, charged for her. She screamed, told him to stay back. She'd never shot a gun in her life. She wasn't going to start now. Trevor grabbed her by the shoulders and... <laughs> what do you think you remember is not necessarily what really happened or how others remember it. But Trevor fell back on the carpet, dead. That we all remember. Mom, where are you? Did you get the journal? I'll be down in a minute. Aunt Marie is getting a little worked up here. She threatened to smoke a cigar in your car. Don't let her. Don't let her smoke. I love that car. She knows you do. Get down here, Mom. You're taking like forever. I'll be down in a minute. Bring the journal. Mm -hmm.